Today we're going to take a look at cylinders, specifically the volume of a cylinder. Now before we get started, let's remind ourselves of what a cylinder is. We know that a cylinder is basically a circle that we've given some height. So cylinders are three-dimensional because they have height. The other way that we can think of a cylinder is to think of them as a combination of two-dimensional shapes. What we have are a combo of a rectangle, and we'll explain that in a second, plus two circles. So what we have here on our page are a couple examples of simple cylinders. What we can see is the top circular part here. We can see this rectangular piece, which is actually wrapped around our circle. And what we can't see, it's a little bit hidden, is we actually have the bottom circle that would look something like so. If we take our cylinder and flip it on its side, we might have something that looks like this. And if we were to unwrap our cylinder or turn it into a net, what we can see is our top circle, our bottom circle, and the rectangle that wraps around it. Now when we think of cylinders, we can think of some common everyday items. We have things like cans, so whether this is a can of pop, a can of soup, or a can of pasta sauce. We might have something like a speaker, so if you happen to have Alexa at home, it is shaped like a cylinder. Something like a water bottle is also a great example of a cylinder. Now some water bottles have smaller tops or they might have a spout on top to make it easier to drink out of, but they are generally cylinders. We can also think of something like a Pringles can, one of my personal favorites. Something like a pole that we might see holding hydro wires and even something as simple as a pen or a pencil. These are all examples of cylinders. Now in order to determine the volume of a cylinder, there's a couple things that we have to be aware of and have to be able to identify. We know that pi is important, and we're going to remember that pi for our sakes, we're using 3.14. And when we're determining the volume, what we're taking is what we would normally use for area, so that pi r squared, and we're adding to it the height of our shape. So on my cylinder, I have to make sure that I identify a couple measurements. I have to make sure that I identify the radius of my circle, and I have to make sure that I identify the height of my cylinder. Once I have both of those variables, finding the vo volume is fairly straightforward. Let's take a look at example one. Here we're being given a whole bunch of information and we have to very carefully dissect that information so that we know what we have, what we might need, and how we can solve for the volume of our cylinder. In this example we're being told that the base of our juice can is a circle with diameter 6.8 centimeters. So we are being given information that diameter equals 6.8 centimeters. We're being told that the height of our juice can is 12.2 centimeters. What we want to find out is the volume of our cylinder. Now you have an example of a cylinder here, so let's just put that information onto our diagram. We know that diameter, again, which is the distance across a circle through the middle, is 6.8. We know that the height is going to be 12.2. Now what we need to ensure is that when we're using our formula for finding the volume of a cylinder, that we have all the variables that we need. So we can recall just from our previous page that in order to find the volume of a cylinder, I need pi r squared h. So when I take a look at what I have, I have a measurement for height, but what I'm missing is a measurement for radius. So before I get going too far, I have to make sure that I find that out. We'll remember that radius is like saying diameter divided by two. So if we take our diameter, which is 6.8, and divide by two, we can calculate that we're going to have a radius of 3.4 centimeters. 
once we have all that information, so now we actually have a numerical amount for our radius, we can take our numbers, 12.2 for height, 3.4 for radius, put them into our equation and solve for the volume. So volume equals pi. We're going to put our radius in brackets, so 3.4, and we don't want to forget to square that. We'll come back to that in a second. And then we're going to, again in brackets after the fact, write 12.2. Now, just like we will remember from finding the area of a circle, we do need to make sure that we solve this using bed mass. So we have to make sure that we find the square of that 3.4 before we do anything else. So volume equals the pi I can just rewrite. I'm going to solve that little piece first. So 3.4 times 3.4, which is going to give me 11.56 when I punch that into my calculator. And then I'm going to just rewrite or drop down my height, which is 12.2. Now that I have everything sorted out and all I'm doing is multiply and multiply and multiply, I can punch that all into my calculator. So 3.14 times 11.56 times 12.2. And what I'm going to get on my calculator is 442.84048 centimeters cubed. Now again, remember we're using cubed here because we're dealing with volume and we're actually working in three dimensions. So that gives us a reminder of what that little numerical amount for our unit has to be. The last thing we have to keep track of or remember is that because we are working in centimeters, how we have to round. So you'll remember that we have to round to one decimal place. So we're going to say that our final volume is approximately 442.8 centimeters cubed. And that there is our answer for the volume of this particular cylinder. Take a moment and try example two on your own. In our second example, again, we're looking for the volume of a specific cylinder, which has a specific height and a specific diameter. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that we write down our formula for volume, which I've written here in purple. I also want to make sure that I go through my question and identify, and I can I like to do this by circling, what my variables are. I see that my height is equal to seven centimeters and my diameter is five centimeters. So just like our previous example, we have height in our formula, so that can just transfer down. That's gonna be pretty straightforward. But for our diameter, we actually need to take a minute to figure out the radius because our formula doesn't use diameter, it uses radius. So I've just taken a second, like I did in my previous example, to calculate that the radius is the same as saying diameter divided by two, so five divided by two, so 2.5 centimeters. So that is gonna be one number I use, that's gonna be the second variable that I use. Now I can start to replace this information into my formula. So varia, <laughs> volume equals pi, then I find my radius, which is 2.5, and I have to remember to square it, then I'm going to put in brackets my height, which is 7. Remember that we have to do our part with squaring our number first. We have to make sure that we follow bed mass. So volume equals pi. And when I square 2.5, I'm going to get 6.25. And I can just rewrite that 7 after the fact. And when I calculate all that together, it's going to multiply out to 137.375 centimeters cubed, but again, because I'm working in centimeters, I need to make sure that I round to one decimal place. So this is actually going to be approximately 137.4 centimeters cubed as my final answer. All right, let's just take a quick walk through our practice questions to make sure that we understand everything that we need to do. In example number one, I'm given the radius of two centimeters. I'm given the height of five centimeters. So there's nothing else really that I need to do other than to use those variables, plug them into my formula, make sure to use bed mass and solve. And what I'm going to end up with is a volume of 62.8 centimeters cubed. When I take a look at example number two, what I have to notice is that this three meters here is actually my diameter. So I do need to make sure that to figure out the radius, I take my diameter and cut it in half or divide by two. 
So I'm going to have a radius of 1.5 meters. I need to make sure that I do that, otherwise I'm going to be using the wrong variable in my formula. My height is okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Again, I need to make sure that I multiply that 1.5 by itself, or I need to make sure that I square it. And the trick here, or the thing that we have to remember here is, even though we're working in whatever unit we may be happen to work, be working in, we do need to make sure that in the middle of our question, we keep all of those numbers on our calculator because they do and they will impact our final answer. So we do have to make sure that we keep those there. So when I multiply 1.5 by itself, I'm gonna keep that 2.25, I'm gonna keep all that on my screen on my calculator, multiply by 3.14, multiply all that by 12, and I'm gonna end up with a volume of 84.78. Now, in making sure that we keep our numbers accurate, even though it's a little bit different than maybe the way that we've been thinking so far, all right? In my final question, what I have is a diameter of 6.7 centimeters. And again, even though normally when we work with centimeters, we think of rounding to one decimal place, we want to make sure that we don't do that until the very end of our question. So when we take our diameter and cut it in half or divide by two, we need to make sure that that 3.35 exactly as it shows up is what we use as our measurement for radius, even though it is more decimal places than we're normally used to. We're not going to do any of that rounding until the very, very end. Secondly, similar to that and carrying on from that, when I square that 3.35, I'm going to get a number that has a whole bunch of decimal places. I don't want to do any rounding yet. I want to make sure that I save that rounding until the very end. Keep all those numbers exactly the way that they are until I get to the end of my question. When I multiply pi times 11.2225 times the height of 9.6, what I'm going to end up with on my calculator is 338.29104 centimeters cubed. At this point in time, this is when I want to round my final answer to make my approximation. So I'm going to say that the approximate value of this volume for this particular cylinder rounds to 338.3 centimeters cubed. And again, I'm going to one decimal place here because I'm working with centimeters.